Hello, in today's video, I'm going to be looking at a free TEFL certificate offered by the website Teacher Record or Teacher Record. I'm not really sure which pronunciation they're going for there. Um, this is a video that I've been wanting to make for a while. Uh, I heard about this certificate several months ago. Um, I didn't make this video until now because I realized that it would take more time than my videos normally take to make. So I'm planning to have quite an in-depth look at this certificate. We'll have a look at what it actually contains, what you have to do to get it, and decide whether it's any good or not. Uh, the reason why I'm making this video now is because I recently had a teacher that applied to our school with this um, certificate and um, uh, yeah, I, I think people should know whether this certificate is actually any good or not. So if you like this video, please like it, subscribe if you haven't already, share it with anyone who might find it useful, and uh, do comment if you have any thoughts, um, because I always respond. So if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you'll know that my early videos were mostly around uh, TEFL certificates and uh, I haven't actually made any on TEFL certificates for a while I think um, so it's a good time to jump back into that. Uh, so in some of those videos I've said why most TEFL certificates I don't trust and the reason for that is because uh, they offer some kind of online platform um, where they give you some information and then there's some kind of multiple choice uh, test and it's very easy for someone to do such a uh, test and then take the answers and give them to other people. And so if you go on YouTube and you look for uh, this qualification teacher record, you don't even need to write in teacher record answer key, just teacher record. Um, I found at least seven um, videos here that say uh, they have the answer key. Uh, there's another one there, uh, another one there. Uh, so the biggest one I think has about 39,000 views. So that's telling me that probably almost 40,000 people have uh, cheated on this uh, certificate. Um, when you actually sign up for this certificate, it does have a um, some terms and conditions that say that you won't uh, just copy the answers or get them from an answer key. But there's really no way that they're going to actually uh, test whether you got these answers from one of these videos or not. So straight away, that's a massive red flag that this is not going to be a quality um, qualification to have because it's so easy to cheat on it. So as you can tell, I don't really have very strong hopes for this certificate. But for this video, I am going to try and be fair and give it a fair chance. So let's have a look at the teacher record um, website now. Uh, here it is here. So it describes this um, certificate as a 120 hour certificate. We'll have to see um, how much time actually it looks like the material will take. It claims that it's internationally recognized. Now every TEFL certificate does this. Um, and really, what does that actually even mean? If two employers in two different countries will accept this certificate, would that mean it's internationally recognized? If um, a, what about if it's not even recognized by schools in, in countries? What if it's an online school? Um, if this certificate is recognized by them, would that make it internationally recognized? This is a, a phrase that's really meaningless. Um, and since all of the other TEFL certificates claim to be internationally recognized, it really doesn't mean a lot. Uh, it says that it's fully online. You can study online anytime and anywhere. I don't necessarily have too much of a problem with that. Um, nowadays, you can do a SALTA online, um, but of course, not all of that uh, SALTA course would be any time um, because you would need to do classes at certain times. So uh, I'm guessing that there's no live teaching component to this. Um, I mean, I'm guessing that from the price anyway, because that would mean that someone has to actually market, someone actually has to um, actually assess what what the person is able to do on this course. 
um, and you wouldn't be able to offer that for free. No one is going to do that for free. Um, you've got 12 month access to the online campus. But basically, you have 12 months access to the website. Um, okay, fine, no problems there. It's 100% no charge. I mean, okay, we all like free stuff, but equally, it's got to be valuable um, if it's going to claim to uh, be worthwhile. Uh, permanently valid, well, again, I mean, what does that even mean um, in terms of these certificates being valid? They're not really backed up by anybody, so uh, doesn't really mean a lot. And help in finding TEFL jobs online and abroad. It seems to me that this was actually what this company started out as, um, basically trying to put people into TEFL jobs. And absolutely nothing wrong with that, of course. Uh, I don't know what their record is like for that, whether they work with um, any unscrupulous uh, employees, uh, employers. Um, I don't know. So the course entry requirements, um, ability to communicate clearly and fluently in English. Well, they don't test this in any way because you're just signing up for a website. So um, I don't really see how that's a requirement. Uh, nationality of a native country not required. Okay, so a, one of their requirements is a non-requirement. Um, and similarly, university degree is not required. So basically nothing is required. Anyone can do this uh, certificate. Uh, it's as simple as that. Uh, introduction of the 120 hour TEFL course. So the reason why they're saying 120 hours is because the SALTA is 120 hours. And many um, schools will argue well, we'll ask for a 120 hour TEFL certificate. Um, well, they'll ask for SALTA or equivalent, and that's one way that people can try and argue that another TEFL certificate is equivalent because it's the same number of study hours. But of course, that really is just one factor. Um, the main factor for the SALTA is that it offers this um, actual teaching practice and uh, this course is probably not going to offer that. We'll find out soon enough. Um, 120 hour certificates can be legalized, notarized or apostilled for international visa application purposes. Okay, fine. So you get a piece of paper basically that um, you can take to a lawyer and they'll say that, yes, you have a piece of paper. Okay, fine. Um, the aim of 120 hour TEFL course is designed to cover every aspect of teaching English from planning your first lesson to applying for your first job abroad. I don't know why you plan your first lesson before you necessarily apply for your first job. Um, that seems a bit backwards, to be honest. Um, but anyway, okay, so they're obviously aiming at people who don't really have any uh, teaching experience. So we're probably looking for a, quite a low bar anyway in terms of the information that's being um, given. And your certificate will be issued instantly after you complete your course online. Well, OK, that that sounds good, to be fair. Um, you want your certificate as soon as possible. I'm not going to knock that. Uh, how should I start the course? Click here and enroll. Um, I did that earlier, so we'll see um, what I found on there earlier. Uh, course breakdown. What do we have? Lessons planning. I would just call that lesson planning myself, but OK. Teaching receptive skills, productive skills. Well, yeah, good. You want all the skills covered. Teaching English grammar. OK. Surviving in the classroom. OK, nice. And teaching children. OK, that's actually quite a good thing, I would say, um, because the SALTA, for example, is often criticised because it's focused on teaching adults. And actually, a lot of the teaching that people are doing nowadays is teaching young learners. Uh, there are probably much more, many more jobs these days for teaching children than there are for teaching adults. Um, so, yeah, that's that's good that they're including it as a module. Um, in reality, what should probably happen at some point is that we will switch from having courses that are designed for adults and then have some kind of extra bit for teaching young learners and actually starting with a course that focuses on teaching young learners and then has an extra bit for teaching adults maybe. Um, but yeah, no, that, that's a good um, addition. I'll, I'll give them um, a, a tick for that one. Um, what will my certificate look like? Well, it looks something like this. Um, I did see this earlier and I thought uh, the name that they've got on here 
uh, is uh, Black James, which I'm guessing should really be James Black, maybe. Um, I don't know. That that kind of made me laugh. Um, and then their partners, well, they have a number of uh, Chinese uh, schools. I think most of these operate in China. Um, some of them might be outside of China, but I, I think mostly they're in China. And they're also an IATFL institutional member. Uh, all that means is that they pay about £200 a year to IATFL, maybe a bit more, uh, to get access to IATFL's publications. It doesn't mean that IATFL are saying that they are a good um, provider of courses or anything like that. It just means that they pay money to IATFL. Um, so, yeah, that is... Uh, that's really that. So we will uh, go and have a look at the um, at the actual course pages and see what they actually offer. Okay, so when you create your account and you go in, you have to press some buttons to sign up for the actual certificate. But once you do, you'll get to a list of all of the um, all, all of the parts of the the course here. Uh, you might notice that I signed up with a different name. Um, I don't really want their certificate, to be honest. Um, but anyway, let's have a look. So we've got um, these modules, Introduction to TEFL. Okay, fair enough. Grammatical and Syntactic Awareness, Lesson Planning, Lesson Planning Plus. Okay, Control Practice with Games, uh, Lexis Phonology and Functional Language, Listening, Reading, Speaking uh, and Writing, uh, Grammar, um, and then a very unfortunately named Module 12, targeting children. Um, I'm not going to say any more about that. I think it's clear what they actually mean. Um, and I'm not suggesting that they mean um, what this phrase implies that they mean. Um, but it did make me laugh, certainly. And uh, module 13 classroom strategy. So you'll see that a lot of the modules have a test. And we'll go for the we'll go for the final test. Why not? So uh, you can see here that they've got a multiple choice uh, question on teaching a new elementary class of 30 students with limited resources. Would it be better to give students labels with nouns of classroom objects and instruct them to stick them onto the correct objects? Write out 30 copies of a worksheet with gaps such as name, age, hobbies and favorite food or ask students to write 250 words describing themselves. Um, Okay, well, I'm not even sure what they want us to go for here. Um, I mean, the first one could be fun, but you've got a lot of students there. The second one, write out 30 copies of a work. Who's doing the writing? I don't understand this. Are you saying that the teacher should write these out? Or it looks like the teacher writes. The... Okay, I don't even know what they're talking about, to be honest. But as you can see... Um, this is a multiple choice quiz, so you can choose your answers. Uh, if you go and watch one of those other videos where they give the answers out, you're really not going to have any problem here. You're probably going to get whatever score that person got, and it was probably high enough. So uh, let's have a look at the actual content itself. Um, I think we can accept that the assessment is not really being done in the best way here. Um, I mean, I don't know how else they can do it for free. Uh, I'm not saying that there's a better way for them to necessarily do this and keep the course for free. I'm just saying this is the problem with a free course. So if we look at module one, introduction to TEFL, um, we can see there's actually quite a bit of information here. Um, so I can believe that it might actually take 120 hours to read through everything that's on this, this website, to be honest. Um, but that is, of course, the only way that you're actually getting information here is you're just reading what's on the website and um, you're hoping that whoever has, I would suggest they've taken um, information from a number of different sources. You're hoping that they've really understood it themselves and um, are representing it correctly here. Uh, on a number of units, you get this picture of this woman here. I have no idea who this woman is. Um, they haven't introduced her anywhere. I assume that she is the person who wrote a lot of this material. 
Um, they don't give her name or anything. So I have really no way of, of checking who this woman is and, and what her credentials are. Um, they write some stuff about the English language here. Uh, I think there were a couple of things I disagreed with on this page, particularly where they say near the beginning that uh, English is one of the simplest and easiest languages in the world. Um, well, a lot of English students just certainly don't think so. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it does go on to say the concept of easiness is, is relative, of course. I think there are certain things about learning English that actually makes it easier to learn than other languages, such as the fact there's so much exposure out there to English and um, it's really easy to be kind of motivated to learn English because uh, there's no other language that you really need as much to participate in in the global, um, you know, in, in, in the world really. Um, so maybe that's what they meant. And if that's the case, perhaps I should uh, let them off there. Um, so then they have some practice questions. Again, as you can see, it's all uh, true or false. Um, then we've got the phrases L1 and L2. Okay, useful phrases to, to know, certainly. Um, I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong in the information, really. I, I, haven't, um, I haven't read it all, so I don't know um whether there is but i mean non just just looking at it it looks reasonably okay um i don't think that there's too much wrong with it um i think these are some good things to go through uh as a kind of introduction to tefl uh what makes a good teacher sure um what makes a good learner perhaps actually they don't have that there okay um setting the stage what do they mean by that exactly um so this looks yeah okay setting up the classroom basically um of course seating so this is all classroom management basically classroom rules giving instructions this is all the kind of stuff that you would go through on a salter in the first um it, within the first week you'd be doing uh, a lot of this uh stuff some icebreakers um this is a bit of a weird one because normally on a on most TEFL courses, you'd probably be on the course with other people. Um, so you would actually do some icebreakers with your colleagues and actually see how they work. Um, but here, well, you've just got, uh, you know, you've got some kind of, I'm not even really sure what to call this. Um, I guess you could copy it and call it a worksheet. Um, and then you've got some explanation of uh, what you're supposed to do with it um similarly you've got uh, another uh, activity here uh, another one here I'm guessing that comes from the reward books um and then some more questions of course um and even more questions and then we've got about feedback um it says student feedback but i'm I'm pretty sure they mean feedback to students rather than feedback from students. Um, so basically error correction, uh, which yeah, again is something that we would cover in a SALTA um, very early on. So then let's have a look at some of the other units that we've got here. So module two is about grammar and syntactic awareness. Uh, so I saw this earlier, which was about, uh, the grammar at every, uh, level. This is something that I actually would, um, would challenge because I don't think it's really helpful of thinking as grammar as something that, um, students know at each level and considering that they, uh, spend the page before going on about the CEFR, uh, this actually kind of flies in the face of what the CEFR was all about, which was about trying to, um, say what people can do at, at particular levels or which was then uh, backed up by the ALTE uh, can do statements. Um, so it's not really about having mastery of, of grammar at a certain um, stage. It's really about being able to achieve certain functions um, within the language. And so sometimes you might have many different grammatical ways of achieving the same thing, basically. So uh, I think it's much more helpful, really, to think of 
uh, what people can do at these levels rather than uh, what grammar they might know or might not know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it assumes that there's an order in which people learn grammar. And I think that's being constantly shown not to really be the case. Uh, one thing that we might teach a student at a very low level is uh, I was born in, which is obviously a uh, past uh, simple passive uh, sentence. But here, where would they put the passive? Uh, probably at pre-intermediate, I'm guessing. Uh, I don't see it there. Um, no, they haven't put it till intermediate. Usually I would say that passive is um, often introduced by um, pre-intermediate level, um, but there you go. Um, anyway, so then they go through uh, each level, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing to do. Um, students on a, a SALSA course actually will get to teach two different levels. Uh, typically it's like pre-intermediate and upper intermediate. Um, but that means that they often don't actually know what they need to do differently for say a beginner level or an elementary level. So, um, yeah, maybe, maybe a point to a uh, teacher record for, uh, including stuff about different levels. Um, fair enough. Uh, again, we've got, um, uh, we've got questions. We've got some key grammatical terms. Um, Salter doesn't tend to uh, teach grammar, basically, because it's assumed that uh, teachers applying for Salta will actually have a certain amount of grammatical knowledge. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's fine that they've got a unit that's really around um, grammar um, and just making sure that people know, know the grammar before they actually think about how to teach grammar. Um, I guess that may actually um that that may actually help uh the, the participants to actually take more in when they get to actually how to teach grammar um so yeah just lots of stuff about grammar and syntax here really uh so let's have a look then at the next unit we have what do we have we have lesson planning okay so they talk about PPP, TTT, and task-based learning, excuse me. Um, yeah, they call these procedures, we often refer to them as, as lesson frameworks. Um, here, they, they refer to it as an approach. I don't really like this uh, terminology here, really, because uh, an approach is really basically your beliefs about um, your subject matter, how teaching works, um it's not really ppp isn't an approach it's a way of um structuring a lesson and uh, they say here that it, it plays a major part in the salta qualification um i would certainly agree that it it, it used to the, the salters i've been running um we've been a lot more focused on ttt actually on uh, test teach test so um i don't know that actually ppp necessarily is the uh, focus of um, SALTA anymore, um, but it might depend on which SALTA trainers are running them. Uh, it says here that it's seen as a communicative approach to teaching. Again, I would say this is a misunderstanding of PPP. Um, PPP isn't really the approach. So uh, yeah, this, this, this first paragraph here actually worries me a little bit. Um, I think then they've got a, a description of, you know, presentation, practice, production, the three stages of PPP, which are probably okay. Uh, again, I haven't read all of this. I, I don't intend to, um, and I'm not going to look for every last mistake. Um, they talk about lesson plan structure. Uh, that looks fairly okay. Um, so let's look at a, a lesson plan. I think really they're looking at stage aims here, actually, uh, or procedures, sorry. Yeah, sorry, they're looking at procedures, okay. Uh, then they go on to test, teach, test. Okay, I mean, that's that's good, actually. Um, I didn't expect that they would go for test, teach, test. Uh, unfortunately, because there's no practice of actual teaching on this uh, course, they're not going to get any practice of actually applying this. Um, so I don't know that it's really that useful to just read about it, to be honest. That That's the bit that I'm 
kind of having trouble with. And then of course I got task-based learning, which again is um, something that I think a lot more teachers should be using. Um, so yeah, again, it's, it's good that they've got some stuff on task-based learning, but without the opportunity to put it into practice, um, I just, I don't really see that it's that useful. Uh, motivation is a good thing to, uh, to look at certainly. Um, I might have lumped this in really with the previous unit, to be honest. Um, it's about, you know, the attributes of a learner really. Um, but yeah, there you go. So that's, uh, that's the first part of lesson plans, lesson planning. And the second part, let's have a look at that. Uh, so here they're encouraging them to make a lesson plan. Um, okay. So they've mentioned also the TKT. Um, so they're obviously linking, um, what they're doing here to that. Um, but I would say that the TKT is still a better qualification. Um, at least I, I know that you've actually, um, really taken it and, and had to do it yourself. You, you know, you haven't just been able to copy the answers from a YouTube video. So, uh, components of a lesson plan. Well, I mean, it says here essential and optional components, but I mean, that really depends on who you're producing the lesson plan for, uh, different schools will have different requirements. Um, and probably most schools won't actually ask you to do a lesson plan unless you're doing an observation. Um, so yeah, uh, more about lesson components. Okay. Summary lesson components, got some questions. Okay. Planning procedures for the lesson assessment. Uh, that's interesting actually, because this is within a lesson planning and typically you might look at assessment more for course planning. Um, but I guess they're, they're putting it all together. Um, what else have we got? Basically having a grammar book maybe to, uh, to help you, uh, the phonemic chart. Okay. I'm guessing that might come up, uh, later when they get onto phonology. Okay, various uh, aids and things that you can use. Okay, a bit about designing your own materials. There's all kinds of reasons why you might want to do that. Okay, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with um, the things that they're choosing to include here. In fact, actually, um, I I'll be honest in, in saying that I this the the list of things that are being included here actually is better than I thought it would be. Um, I thought this would actually really not include much of any use at all. Um, but I think actually there is some useful information here. Um, so module five, I forget what module five was called actually. Um, let's just have another look at that. Uh, module five is control practice with games. Okay. So they want to start off with the communicative approach. That's why I was wondering why they called it this. Cause it looked like, um, it looked like it was going to be something on, um, approaches at first. Um, anyway, so communicative approach, they've got some things about this, I guess they're going for communicative approach so that, uh, they can talk about communicative activities. I guess that's the reason Well, yeah, unit two communicative activities. So, um, yeah, as it says here, uh, it's really about having a, real life purpose for, for doing these activities. Um, and then they go on to talk about gap fills, um, uh, because obviously they have a real communicative purpose. <laughs> um, obviously, um, I'm joking there. They don't really have a real communicative, uh, purpose. I, I can't think of many real situations where we actually fill in a gap fill. Um, but of course we do use them. That's very true. I don't think they're necessarily not helpful, but, um, I think we need to keep it in mind that they're not really, um, communicative activities, uh, spot the difference. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, Problem-based discussions. Some stuff on error correction. Okay, what to correct and when to correct. And of course, how to correct. Um, okay, fine. Uh, let's have a look at unit six. Or module six, as they've actually called it. So uh, in module six, we've got, let's see, Lexis. Um, it's interesting here that they say grammar and skills are going to be key areas for EFL teaching. Oh, oh okay. Okay, it, it seemed to me they were saying that they were more important. Um, but yeah, I would certainly disagree and, and say that vocabulary is probably more important. Um, so, okay, they talk about Lexis. Okay, yeah, lots of, there is useful information here, certainly. Okay, functional language. Um, more about functions. Let's have a look at um, unit seven. So now we're moving on to the receptive skills. Um, talking about receptive and productive skills. It's interesting that they've put um, passive here um, and then not gone on to explain that actually listening and reading are actually not really uh, all that passive. Um, they actually require quite a lot of effort uh, to do effectively. Uh, learning styles, okay, interesting. Uh, okay, yeah, I thought they might go on to uh, VAK here, which they do. Uh, this is something that's largely been um, well, it's largely been debunked at this point. Um, so yeah, they, I, I wouldn't have included that in a course now. Um, I thought they might also go on to uh, multiple intelligence theory, which has also been uh, pretty, pretty much debunked. Uh, Okay, so they present uh, listening by the looks of it as uh, pre-listening, while listening and, and post-listening, uh, which is more or less how the TKT actually does it. So as they say about uh, a lot of this being based on TKT, that does seem to be the case. So I assume that they do more or less the same thing with reading. Um, Okay, so they talk about skimming and scanning. I like the fact that they actually call them techniques rather than uh, subskills, actually. Uh, okay. Ah, okay, so I, I might have missed this uh, earlier on, but they've actually got a reading skills DVD lesson here. So they do actually have um, some lessons for people to watch. I don't actually see where you get to this lesson. Um, don't see where you actually play it from. It would have been pretty easy to embed it here, I would have thought. So I don't know where I'm supposed to go for that, but okay. Uh, I don't know what book this is from. Um, but they should really uh, actually say what book it comes from. Um, they should really do that. They shouldn't just copy materials from published materials and put them on the web. Uh, similarly, that looks like it probably comes from a book. They should really do the same thing with that as well. Okay, here's the reading uh, lesson video. Hey, do you remember who this 
Okay, this um, looks a lot like the videos that um, Cambridge actually uh, produce. Um, as you can see, it looks a little bit dated, really. Um, I don't know. I don't know how dated it actually is. Whether um, it's just the, the settings of the the camera and so on um, that look a bit dated. But anyway, it looks like something Cambridge have probably produced. Uh, they don't say where this video has come from, so I hope they're not just uh, copying that from some source and, and using it without permission. Uh, let's have a let's just have a flick through the lesson a bit. Lenny Henry, good, yes, okay. It's spirit eater from Jamaica. Okay, it was actually brought up in Birmingham. Okay, well, I don't think I'm really going to find much wrong with the video. It seems like something, as I say, that Cambridge uh, probably put together, probably use on um, TKT or Salsa somewhere. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't think there's much more I can say about that. Um, part two, I assume, is more of the same. And then suggested solutions. I guess these answer some questions that I skipped over somewhere earlier. So, okay, we'll leave those. Uh, so then let's have a look. Uh, we've got speaking next. Uh huh. Okay. So very short overview. Um, then we've got some reasons why speaking is difficult. Concept of freer practice. Okay, some strategies. Okay, and some vocabulary activities and exercises. Okay, I mean, that's obviously going to be a useful resource for people who are um, starting out. They've got some um, ideas about things that they can do here. Um, not sure they're necessarily all great, but yeah, they've got some ideas there. And then let's see, uh, writing is obviously the last skill here. So, we've got some before, during and after writing activities. Okay, I don't see anything here about process and product writing, which I would expect there to be. Okay, but again, they do have um, some lessons to watch. Okay, right. Pens down. Yeah, pens down. Stand up. Come here. Okay, circle. So as you can see with this, um, with this lesson, again, I think it's probably from a Cambridge source. Um, I think they're in the same classroom, actually, as the previous video we saw. Uh, so I'm worried that they're probably using this video from somewhere without actual permission. Um, they haven't actually credited the permission for using it. Um, but the lesson itself is probably going to be all right, assuming that it actually comes from, from Cambridge. So I'm not going to look at that any further. Okay, so then let's see what else we've got. So grammar, um, and we had a lot of grammar earlier, of course, but we've got more grammar here. Um, I don't think it's a repeat of any of the grammar, of course, but it seems more about actual, more about knowing the grammar than teaching it. Okay, 
here we okay again we've got a, a video lesson let's have a quick look good morning exactly okay once once more seems to be the same classroom same students uh, so I think again it's probably from uh, Cambridge this video uh, that's a very odd uh, practice question ready to see the answers um, okay and then some more evaluation of that lesson okay we got some something about concept questions here concept checking questions okay and then the uh the unit that i was obviously really looking forward to uh <laughs> to reading about targeting children um just badly named really uh but as i say good idea to include that uh yeah obviously classroom behavior is going to be a big issue with young learners um seven r's okay i'll, I'll be honest that's a, a new one on me but yeah rules routines uh certainly things that you want to uh, set up with young learners uh storytelling okay yeah absolutely uh drama yeah drama is a, a good thing to use certainly I might have expected something on TPR here, to be honest. Um, maybe it is hidden in there somewhere, but uh, yeah, I'm surprised there isn't anything on TPR. Okay, and then what we got last of all, classroom uh, strategy. So we've got some of the things that people run into, I guess. These are about problems. Uh, teaching with limited resources. I've been there, definitely uh what have we got so this is some kind of activity okay uh label the room okay fine they seem to like that activity a lot um create a poster okay i think these are just activities really at this point uh teaching large classes okay yeah that's a um that's, that's a, a big challenge that you might get, especially teaching in somewhere like China, uh, which is, of course, where a lot of uh, teachers end up going. Um, we've got questions. Uh, teacher's role. Uh, more questions about that. Uh, discipline in the uh, classroom. So again, that's going back to um, managing behavior um of young learners um this seems to be like 19 or 20 tips for maintaining discipline okay more questions and then culture okay all right and that seems to be all of the uh, material on this course uh so if you go through and read all of that um then i guess yeah you can uh, go and teach uh, English somewhere right so that concludes my uh, review really of, of their uh, of, of the material um, so my final conclusion then really is that uh, firstly I, I will give uh, teacher record uh, it's or teacher record teacher record teacher record sounds better I think I will give them their um, their, their dues really that this uh, program does look a lot better than actually I was expecting. I was expecting it to be um, much less organized and uh, not really to, to contain as much information there as, um, as it might. I don't actually think it will take 120 hours to do all of that. I think it's probably more like 40 or 50 hours, to be honest. Um, I could be wrong. Um, I'm not going to do it and find out uh yeah i've got no interest in in doing it um but i i really don't think it would take 120 hours it would certainly take a lot less if you go to youtube and i mean you're already on youtube obviously but if you just uh, type into the search box um for the teacher record uh answer key then obviously it will take you a lot less because you won't have to read anything um so that really still remains my my biggest gripe with it 
Um, the, the two reasons why this isn't a why this isn't really a a valuable document for teaching English is because there's no live practice. Uh, so the thing is, you're going. You might let me let me just assume that somebody actually reads everything that's here and they really i know they make notes and they go over their notes and they really try to take in everything that's on this website um they're still basically experimenting when they get to uh their first teaching job and the problem with that is that that's not what students are expecting that's not what schools market uh, schools market their teachers as experts uh, very often. Um, maybe there are some places where they don't. Maybe there are some schools where they're honest with their customers that this is a new teacher. Um, but really, most schools are telling their students, here's your teacher. They're an expert in teaching English. Um, and the students really don't know. They have no idea. Um, it could be like a career changer who... Um, maybe they're they're retired so they're like 65 years old um and the students will just believe that they've been a teacher for the last 30 years um because why why not um so yeah that that's that's really the the problem is that what the students are expecting is a qualified teacher somebody who actually knows what they've been doing um someone who's actually had some classes assessed in the past and what they get instead is a teacher who has really just read some information online and remembered a bit of it and is applying less than that of it. Um, the only way we can really see that the teacher is actually applying this is if they actually apply it. Uh, so at least with Salta, um, you get teachers to actually teach some lessons, to actually practice um, what they're learning and actually apply it. And then you get to say, when they don't apply it, you get to say, yeah, this is what you actually should have really done in that position. And then they get another chance to practice it the week later. So really, yeah, it's just creating that problem. And I know that sometimes I've hired some teachers as a director of studies that um, weren't necessarily quite where we would have liked them to be at the point that we were hiring them. Um, but I, I believed at the time that I could manage them um, to get them to where they needed to be in a short space of time. But you really don't actually have the time as a director of studies to do that. Um, you know, you think, OK, yeah, it's great. We'll manage to do like four or five um, observations in the first couple of months um, and really make sure that they're on the right track. But then suddenly you find that it's like three months down the line and you've managed to do one observation um, and you've tried to pencil in a second one, but you've had to keep kicking it down the down the road because, um, you know, things come up. So uh, really, as a, as a director of studies, I, I really want to see that teachers that are coming into the school are already... Um, quite self-sufficient i'm not expecting them to be the finished article um i i expect that they understand that they still have room to grow as well and um i think i think salter actually makes that quite clear to its trainees that even at the end of the course you're not you're not like that's not the end of your your journey there's more for you to learn um and that kind of worries me a little bit as well, that people will do this, um, this, this course online and think that that's all there is to, to teaching English. And it's really not. This is just a drop in the ocean of things um, that you could know about uh, teaching English. This is a, yeah, I mean, this is all the kind of foundational stuff. And I think I, I don't see any kind of obvious gaps that, that are missing at this point. Uh, maybe there are some, um, if someone else has noted them, you know, put it, put it in the comments. Um, there, there is a good, good deal of information here and it, it does all look reasonably useful. There might be small points that I might disagree on here. Um, but it does, it does look like a useful, uh, amount of information. Um, but it, it's certainly not everything 
that there is to know about teaching English, but someone might go away from that with that certificate thinking, okay, that's it. I'm ready for everything. And I frequently see teachers who do a cheap TEFL certificate and then think that, and it's, it's, it's really not the case that they know everything and making them see that is actually quite difficult. So, um, yeah, in conclusion, I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing this, this free course. Um, it might be a useful refresher for some people who have actually done a SALTA or TKT or something like this. And, um, you, you certainly don't want to pay to do SALTA again, right? So this might be a good way of refreshing some of that knowledge. Um, if you've maybe lost your SALTA certificate, I suppose, and you want a job online and you just need a certificate quickly, um, maybe this ticks the box for you. Maybe that's, that that's valid. But if you're getting into teaching, you haven't done any teaching before you don't have any other teaching qualifications and you think this is going to, uh, set you up for a teaching job. I really would say no. So with that, I'm going to conclude my review altogether. And, um, I hope you found this, uh, this video useful, interesting. Um, if you know anyone else who might benefit from it, please do send it to them. And if you have any comments, questions, please do drop them below. I always respond. So signing off, uh, I'll see you next time.